What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going to 2 Kings chapter 15. Hallelujah. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection and he lived out his righteousness. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. We'll give you life to Jesus today. And now, 2 Kings 15. And actually, before we get started, well, we're going to start off with Jeroboam, king of Israel. And Azariah, which is Uzziah becoming king of judah so real quick let's go over to this chart it's uh uh the last chapter or two we went through this chart that has the different kings of israel but this one actually shows the prophets as well so right now we're at this point jeroboam king of israel and we're also going to see zechariah uh shalom Mahanahim, then, Pek, then Pekah, king of Israel, in this chapter. And then there's only one more, which we're going to see later, I believe. Hosea, king of Israel. And that was the last king of Israel, the northern house of Israel. But Judah, we're going to start off with uh, Azariah becoming king, son of Amaziah. And... If we look at the prophets here, it gives us the prophets who were in the time of these kings. So Amos was actually, besides Elijah and Elisha, Amos, well, actually Jonah. And then Amos was the first prophet. After that, Isaiah and Hosea. Uh, Hosea. Uh, then Micah. And so the majority of them actually are over here. Nahum, Daniel, Zephaniah, Ezekiel, Habakkuk, Obadiah, Jeremiah, Haggai, and Zechariah. Also, Malachi and, well, it has a question mark here beside Malachi and Joel. I guess uh, it's unknown when exactly they prophesied. But in the time, in this time right here, when Amaziah. The son of Amaziah, Uzziah, or Azariah, becomes king. Amos was prophesying. Then during the time of the reign of Uzziah, Isaiah came to prophesy, and Hosea. And after that, Micah. And we also, we actually see Isaiah, and hopefully the lighting's not too bad. This, this light is... Uh, it's a light that I'm using. It's dim and it's almost out. But uh we actually see about Uzziah or as a uh Azariah in Isaiah chapter six. And the year of King Uzziah's death, which would have been let's look at this again. Seven forty BC. So this is in seven forty BC, Isaiah said in the, in the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw Yahuwah, or I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahuwah of armies, or Yahuwah of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hallelujah. And the foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temp temple was filling with smoke. And 
I never thought about this before, but it says the seraphim stood above him. And so the cherubim are mentioned in Isaiah, I mean, Ezekiel, I believe, chapter 1 and chapter 10. And that's the angels that are underneath the throne of God, that carry the throne of God. And it even says in one of the Psalms, uh, Psalm 18, actually, and also Second uh, Samuel 22, he, f he rode on a cherub and flew. When it's speaking about when Jesus comes on the clouds. And it, the Bible also says in Isaiah, uh, he, set his, he will set his throne in Egypt, which is, I mean, prophetically, Egypt is, is America. And maybe I'll do a study on America. Uh, America, the end time ruling nation, uh, end time world power is going to, is, is fulfilled in many of the prophecies almost all the prophecies of the end time or uh, of, of the past ruling uh, ruling powers from Egypt to Tyre to Babylon Assyria all these different nations come all the prophecies of these different na different nations come together to form a picture of one end time nation the United States of America but these seraphim said so the seraphim stood above him and so the four living creatures in the book of revelation revelation 4 and 5 this isn't the same ones from Ezekiel 1 and 10. This is, uh, I believe, these seraphim who are above the throne of God. And I believe these are the archangels, or at least four of the archangels, the living creatures. Four living creatures, I believe it's Michael, and the book of Enoch actually confirms this. I believe it's Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Fanuel, the Raphael and Fanuel aren't mentioned in the 66 book canon, but are mentioned in the Apocrypha and also in the Book of Enoch. And Lord willing, after we get done with the scripture, the 66 books, as far as these studies, I'll get into the Apocrypha books, which are in the 1611 King James Bible. In the 1611 King James Bible, they're in um, a couple other translations from back then. They're still in the Ethiopian canon of Scripture. They're in the Catholic Bible. And I still have to review them more before I say whether I believe they're legit or not. But I did do a whole, whole study, whole video study on the Book of Enoch. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I do believe it's completely in line with Scripture. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into this study. In the year of King Uzziah's death, actually, uh, still in Isaiah 6, let's go back to 2 Kings 15. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, became king. Azariah, that's Uzziah. He was 16 years old when he became king. And he reigned fifteen year, or 52 years in Jerusalem, one of the longest reigning kings in uh, period, as far as Israel, Israel or Judah. Uh, Manasseh reigned 55 years. So he might have been the second longest reigning king. I think there was another one that reigned 50. He was 16 years old when he became king and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. He did right in the sight of Yahuwah according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Only the high places were not taken away. The people still still sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places. And so some of these kings, they were good kings and good as far as serving God, except very few of them tore down the idol worship, tore down the, the Baal worship, tore down the high places and stuff. Only the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places. Yahuwah struck the king so that he was a leper until the day of his death. And he lived in a separate house. While Jotham the king's son was over the household, judging the people of the land. And Jotham is going to be... Let me double check here. Yeah, Jotham, his Uzziah, or Azariah's son, is going to be 
the next king. Now the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Jotham, his son, became king in his place. And for some reason, the Holy Spirit is telling, uh, telling me to say that uh, these studies I do out of the NASB. Uh, when I first came to faith, uh, 2017, I just started listening to the Bible. I listened to the KJV like 10 times in a row. And then I started looking into different translations, and the NASB was supposed to be the most accurate word-for-word -word translation. And once I switched off the, the KJV uh, and listened to the NASB for the first time, it helped me understand so much more uh, because it's more modern English, and it's supposed to be the most accurate word-for-word -word translation of the Bible. And I believe the KJV-only movement out here is a work of the enemy. That's a movement of the enemy. Because when you only read or listen to the KJV, it's hard to understand some of the scriptures because it's old English. And and we don't speak those same words, a lot of those same words these days. It's harder, harder to understand. But once you get a more modern modern translation, you know, I would suggest any NASB. Uh, there is a new... I normally listen to the 95 version. There was a 77 version, I believe. And there's also a 2020 version of the NASB, which I haven't... It's not on the Bible app here to listen to the 2020 version. But, you know, it is in print, and I haven't read through it yet. So I don't know the differences from the 95 to the 2020 version of the, of the NASB. But, uh... This is what I use to do the studies. In the 38th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, became king over Israel and Samaria for six months. He did evil, and let me just go over here again. It said in the, 20, in the 38th year of Azariah, or Uzziah, Zechariah became king for six months. And then next is going to be Shalom, the Mahanahim, and Pekahiah, then Pekka or Pika. In the 38th year of Azariah, the king, king of Judah, Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, became king over Israel and Samaria for six months. He did evil in the, in the sight of Yahuwah, as his fathers had done. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. Then Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and struck him before the people and killed him and reigned, reigned in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. This is the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke to Jehu, saying, Your sons to the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. And so it was. Shalom, son of Jabesh, became king in the 39th year of Uzziah, king of Judah. And he reigned one month in Samaria. So Shalom only reigned one month. And Menahem, son of Gadi, Gadi, went up from Tirzah and came to Samaria and struck Shalom, the son of Jabesh, in Samaria and killed him and became king in his place. And so, so it was either... Uh, one way or another that these uh, kings were coming into power, that it was either the son of the previous king or somebody killed them and took their place. Now the rest of the acts of Shalom and his conspiracy which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. Then Menahem struck Tifsa and all who were in it and its borders from Tirzah because they did not open to him. Therefore, he struck it and ripped up all its women who were with child. And, you know, that's, that's wicked. And it's mentioned in Scripture a few times. Uh, it's mentioned about Iran here in these last days. Not having uh, compassion on the fruit of the womb. When attacking, um, well, it says Babylon. Babylon is Israel and America and... I'm not going to go into, into that right now. Just I would say Babylon is the mother of harlots. Uh, Ezekiel 23 gives us the two daughter harlots. 
Jerusalem and Samaria, representing modern-day Israel in the United States. In the 39th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Menahem, son of Gadi, became king over Israel and reigned 10 years in Samaria. He did evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He did not depart all his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel sin. Pul, king of Assyria, came up against the land. And Menahem gave Pul a thousand talents of silver so that his hand might be with him to strengthen his kingdom under his rule. Then Menahem ex exacted the money from Israel, even from all the mighty men of wealth, from each man fifty shekels of silver, to pay the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria returned and did not remain there in the land. Now the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Menahem slept with his fathers, and Pekahiah became his son became king in his place. In the fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, he ran fifty-two. In the fiftieth year of Azariah, or Uzziah, king of Judah, Pekahiah, the son of Menahem, be became king over Israel and Samaria, and reigned two years. He did evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he made Israel sin. Then Pekah, the son of Remaliah, his officer, conspired against him and struck him in Samaria. In the castle of the king's house with Argob and Aria, and were with and with him were fifty men of the Gileadites, and he killed him and became king in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Pekahiah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. In the fifty second year, the last year of Azariah or Uzziah, king of Judah. Pekah, son of Remaliah, became king over Israel and Samaria, and reigned twenty years. He did evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the first Jeroboam, the first king of Israel, which he made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, T Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, came in and captured Ijon and Abel Beth, Beth Maccah, and Janua and Kedesh and Hazor, and Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali. And he carried them captive to Assyria. And so this is uh, the beginning of the Assyrian uh, disbursement. Because uh, Pekah is the second to last king of Israel. There's only Hosea left, and then the northern house of Israel ended up being scattered into the nations. And I'll probably speak more about that. I, I speak about it a lot in the scriptures, uh, what this means prophetically. But once we have the last king of Israel, I'll probably speak about it. But this is the second last king, the second last, second to last king of Israel, uh, Pekah. And actually, we see Hosea here. So, in the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came and captured Ajon and Abel Beth Maka, and Janua and Kedesh, and Hazor and Gilead and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali. And he carried them captive to Assyria. And Hosea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Remaliah, and struck him and put him to death and became king in his place. In the twentieth year of Jotham, the king of Uzziah, or Jotham, the son of Uzziah. Now the rest of the acts of Pekah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. So we're going to actually read some more about Pekah here. And it, I don't think it speaks about Hosea anymore in this chapter. But I'll just say, we know that the house of Judah ended up going into the Babylonian captivity for 70 years. And coming back into the land. And Judah, that's who uh, the Jews were 2,000 years ago. And still who the Jews are now. Uh, but Israel, the northern house of Israel, was scattered into the nations by the Assyrians. And they ceased to be a people. And so when Jesus came 2,000 years ago, he said, I, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And speaking about the northern house of Israel, to bring them back. And bring them back through faith. To become a part of Israel again. Through faith. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 11. We are grafted into the olive tree. Which is Israel. 
Ephesians chapter 2, I believe, is uh, also mention, mentions you you formerly Gentiles, formerly separate separate from the commonwealth of Israel, are now, are now brought near. Now considered to be a part of Israel once to come into faith. And so, so prophetically, Ephraim, or the northern house of Israel, um, in end time Bible prophecy, it's either speaking about the United States or speaking about um, Christians. So the so basically, the most of the book of Hosea is about believers. It's about Christians, and a lot of people don't realize that. And a lot of the a lot of the prophecies prophecies are. And I'm not gonna go into. Well, I'll just say this. As far as America representing Ephraim as well, this is where most of Christianity is uh, based out of. Uh, America is probably the biggest Christ Christian nation, at least up there. Uh, also, it's also believed that a lot of the northern house of Israel ended up migrating westward uh, over to America, over to Europe at first, and then over to, over to America. And it's believed that Native Americans... At least a lot of them were from the northern ten tribes of Israel. Um, a lot of people say uh, the tribe of Gad and you know some other tribes, but Ephraim or Israel, that's Christians, and as as far as the land, it's America. In the second year of Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, Jotham the son of Uzziah. King of Judah became king. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerus Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. He did what was right in the sight of Yahuwah. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had, done, Uzziah had done. Only the high places were not taken away, and the people still sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places. He built the upper gate of the house of Yahuwah. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the, of the kings of, of Judah? In those days, Yahuwah began to send Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, against Judah. And Jotham slept with his fathers, and he was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Ahaz, his son, became king in his place. And so, so as far as uh, the timeline here, we're at this point where Ahaz is king of Judah. Ahaz also uh, known as Jehoahaz. And I believe that's the second Jehoahaz. Yeah, there's uh, one Jehoahaz king of Jehoahaz king of Israel. But we're down to Hosea, the last king of the northern house of Israel. And then still after Ahaz, there's next is Hezekiah. And that's who we're going to be getting into next, Hezekiah. After him, his son Manasseh. Then Josiah. Jehoiakim. And Zedekiah. And then that's when the Babylonian captivity happens. But anyway, that's the end of 2 Kings 15. Let's be ready. Let's be right with God. Let's be humble. Let's be pure. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. He loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. And if you believe that he died for you on the cross in order to give you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent. And believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.